In a previous vlog, I commented how these Kader micromotors were a revolutionary item for those of us building small, but wanting to be powerful, Lego trains which required a small motor like this. Um, but how do they stack up compared to Lego's own medium power functions motor, which is previously the only small motor you could get which was power function compatible in a small but powerful package. And why, out of everything, the Kader micro motor is actually probably closer to one of these circuit cubes cubic motors. Strange, isn't it? All that after this. physical space comparison for these motors. I have them imported here in studio. So from left to right we have the Kader micro motor, we have the Lego power functions medium motor and lastly right on the end is the circuit cubes cubic motor, the uh, standard one that comes in one of the um, circuit cubes Bluetooth upgrade kits for example, um, which is quite often an uh, entryway for us uh, people moving to uh, circuit cubes Bluetooth control uh, to buy one of those kits because it contains the motor and the hub. Um, so what can this comparison tell us? Well, for first things first, um, uh, and uh, you'll probably have noticed this, both the Kada micro motor and the circuit cubes cubic motor both have had to have a 2x3 plate put in underneath to match the axle height uh, for the outputs across each motor. Now obviously if you're custom designing a model and you're not trying to retrofit something, uh, for, retrofit a Cade micro motor or a, uh, possibly even conversing it to this uh, circuit cubes malarkey, um, you'll obviously find that you'll have to add an extra plate in to match the motor output. But obviously if you're designing something fresh, you'll obviously notice that the motors are smaller, um, so therefore you can actually be a bit more tight on the um, fitting. Um, so obviously we do need to draw attention to one of the things which is missing um, in these renders, and that's the micro, uh, the Kader, not the Kader, the um, circuit cubes motor here, is actually missing the studs off the top. So this isn't actually smooth, it has, does actually have studs off the top. And I can't remember where I got this from, uh, the uh, my, uh, circuit cubes and micro motor, but I will be updating it and then releasing it on the Brick Frame Depot Discord. Um, and hopefully, we can possibly find another source for it somewhere else um, to be uploaded to so people can have access to it. Um, so, yeah, so to make everything a more equal playing field, I've already had to add the uh, plate in to uh, make sure the output's matching height. Um, but in terms of actual brick height, um, uh, for comparison, uh, you'll have noticed right just off the, to the side, you'll have uh, this set of two bricks and then what the equivalent of two plates in a tile. Well, these are actually three bricks in total, because um, obviously three plates make it, three plates or three tiles make a high the brick height. Um, so you can obviously see that the height of the um, motor here, um, the uh, Kader micro motor, is actually a brick and two plates. Um, so you'd actually need another plate, uh, one here, to actually make this equal to these three bricks. Um, but obviously the bigger thing you may have noticed uh, from this motor comparison is both the Kader micro motor and the circuit cubes motor um, are both two studs wide and that is it. So uh, obviously you'll have cables to deal with, with the, with the uh, circuit cubes motor here on the right you could actually have cables coming out at the sides or the back um, which is actually why this the uh, micro the circuit cubes motor is actually a plate or tile taller than the Kader micro motor is because it's got that extra plate layer for a circuit board so you can output in any of the directions with the Kader micro motor it's always coming out to this uh, what is called the rear right corner um, and the cable's permanently fixed and you've always got it coming out of here. With the Lego power function, most of it's always coming out at the top here. Um, so in terms of connectivity, um, already the, in terms of uh, stud connections, the 
Lego power functions media motor is already losing out because not only does it take up more space overall, yeah, you don't actually have any studs on the top, um, so you can literally only attach it from the bottom or from these tenant pegs on the front. You can't actually do that with the other motors, but because they're smaller, finding ways to fixate them into the body is actually probably going to be slightly easier. And uh, something else that's also missing off this uh, circuit use motor is actually the a little holes in the side for the Technic peg, so you can actually Technic peg this in at the side at least, and uh, those uh, hot pe peg holes actually align with the output shaft hole as well, um, so you do actually get a bit of equalisation there. Um, now in terms of uh, motor comparison, I did say at the beginning that the Cada micro motor is actually more akin to the circuit cubes motor, and, you can, and from this sort of angle you can actually see why. They both occupy a 2x4 footprint, they're both broadly similar in height, uh, two, two bricks and two plates for the micro motor, and then th t uh, two bricks in completely for the uh, circuit cubes motor. Um, they've both got uh, anti studs on underneath and regular studs on top, um, and they're both in a form factor, a lot more compact and easier to fit in than the LEGO Power Functions motor, um, which is one of the big things about moving to one of these aftermarket motors. Um, so with that said, um, the biggest thing for me in terms of comparing these motors is actually the fact that the LEGO Power Functions motor actually goes beyond its two studs. So you have these two studs for the centre, which is obviously what it attaches with at the bottom here. But then you've also got these extra half a stud either side, so it can actually have these Technic peg holes. Um, and you know, if you're trying to find some space or try and squeeze this uh, motor into a tighter hole, maybe you're trying to motorize a uh, standard Lego train, so you'd have uh, you'd only have two studs between the uh, frames. Already, the power functions motor is already at a disadvantage because you can't actually fit it in properly. Instantly, you're more drawn towards the Cada micro motor um, or the circuit cues motor because those are actually two studs wide and only two studs wide. Um, so you can actually have a bit more flexibility in terms of actually integrating those two motors into your uh, model. Uh, so obviously they're smaller in size, but they actually choose as wide, so obviously there's a lot of benefits to uh, the physical aspects of the uh, Cada Micromotor and the Circuit Cubes uh, Cubic Motor in comparison to the uh, Power Functions Motor. <music>
pretend drives this big gear. So as these spin round, you'll see that this one spins a lot slower than this one because it's obviously the nine to one ratio. Or thereabouts. So let's begin this. You can see there that is spinning away quite happily at this speed and it's still reasonably noisy. And we have now reached top speed on the, moot, on the uh, battery box. So you can sort of see this is quite a noisy motor. But this uh, is, a, is at top speed. So now we'll try it the other way because sometimes motors are actually quieter one way than the other. So now we'll do it the other way. And again, we're up to full speed again here. try the same as the other one we'll go that way or a anti-clockwise rotation on the uh, speed dial here and then we'll try clockwise And as you can see, it is quite a noisy motor. And even worse, at low speed, it is very noisy. So let's try the other way. And now to put the uh, motor noise in comparison, we'll now just fire up the Alco. I'll uh, take the, the uh, control of the phone off screen because it's obviously uh, causing a couple of hiccups with the uh, colour correction on the camera. So this is at zero at the moment, so I'll just move it to speed set one. And already you can see we're getting some really nice slow motion there from the loco. I'll just change direction here. Let's see this. That's at speed up two. That's speed up one. And we stopped. Now, I have not changed any of the configuration uh, on the Alco Loco. All I've done is change the uh, the M motor, the power function M motor that was in here, to driving the uh, cab bogey. And actually, uh, so swap that for a micro motor and actually put a micro motor in the nose as well so that you got all four axle powered. So that does mean I have doubled the track effort, but even without changing anything, so actually these two axles were unpowered but floating, they weren't geared in any way. Um, changing just the 
one motor um actually made this crawl along at speeds at once just as in the second motor has just effectively made it a little bit more powerful rather than actually doing anything towards the actual slow speed control so we come after all this testing to the conclusions um and i've had a several nights to sleep about it i've drank several cups of uh, of coffee i've got another one here um you know i've been thinking about how best to quantify out of the three motors that are featured in this video which is the best um and it's very much a application based um of which you would say is the best because obviously for us as train fans we're after something that's not necessarily that ideally is small powerful and has a reasonable level of speed um, because obviously you want to counteract some of the other stuff so obviously you, as a motor we want it powerful because obviously we want it to be able to the loco because obviously if we have a more powerful motor either that means we can reduce the amount of motors we have um, so that will be for example we're reducing from say three motors to two or two motors to one um, because if we have a more powerful motor it can do more on its own so therefore we can reduce our power consumption we can reduce our noise levels um, and it means then we're not having to worry about having to try and fit more motors into a smaller space so if you're doing something like a four or six wheel switcher having one motor is a lot better because then you can means it you can fit a lot more in to the tinier space so that means you can build a smaller switcher or shunt a locomotive um, or you can use uh, or if you have one where it's a thin bonnet or something like that you can actually fit a you know it's actually somewhat achievable to not only build one in that size but actually have it motorized as well so it actually does a job um, obviously the counter to that is that obviously the smaller the motor sometimes it'll be noisier um, sometimes you won't have as high a speed because sometimes a motor which has a decent speed level um, is something which is going to be a bit bigger because smaller motors are small motors normally um, well motors normally are either for power or for speed um, you don't normally find them on that's middle of the road you, you normally have to sacrifice something to get it one or the other um, so obviously all this um, so there's I would quite say there's quite a dis clear distinction um, in my about because obviously there's no point in me talking about which I would say is best it's really best to qualify it in, in, in a table um, so I'll just change that now so as you can see we've now got a uh, table here now this is I wouldn't say absolute um, obviously there are things you might want to prefer doing one way or the other um, so what I've done is that we've got some qualities on the side here so we've got size smaller is better power more is better speed more is preferential noise quieter is better and then obviously the last one is connectivity more is useful um, now I would say with some stars and asterisks and footnotes here um, sometimes speed is not always more preferential because it, if you're doing a smaller loco it's generally going to be a shunter or a switcher as I mentioned previously um, and you do not always want speed in those you want something which is slower but more powerful because that's what it would do in real life um, so I think it's a bit of an unfair thing to sort of say you always want more speed it is fair to say you would want more power from the motor but it's not necessarily true that you'd want more speed from the motor because having a powerful motor that runs at a slower speed or the output certainly runs at a slower speed because obviously most of these motors have a gearbox built in um, is better um, but at the same time if the motor is powerful enough but reasonably fast enough you can still use it for things like uh, your mainline steam locomotive, mainline diesels and electrics um, which would benefit from having a smaller motor size um, either because of the size of the boiler 
um, or simply the fact that it's a smaller loco anyway and you need or you need the more space for the battery box and the control system and that sort of stuff. Um, so getting to, back to the table, um, obviously we have a first, second and third place. So the third one for size um, is really very little to choose between the Kada Micro and the Circuit Cubes Cubic Motor. Both uh, have effectively a 2x4 footprint. Um, the Kada Motor slightly wins because it, the actual body is smaller um, and it's also one plate less in height than the uh, than the uh, circuit cubes cubic motor uh, but and as i mentioned previously that plate is essentially just down to the circuit board on top of the motor um, which gives you that three um, connectivity points for the power um, so really that the cager and the circuit cubes are kind of tied um, in terms of first place and i'll actually put uh, the and there so technically we are tying um, for that first place with those two um, and then obviously the last one we have the Lego power function motor. The Lego power function motor as compared to the others it's an extra two studs wider um, and you can't actually fit it into a a quote unquote a two by six stud space um, regardless of height because it expands a beyond the that two stud width of the base so you can fit the three um, power uh, connector points and the output in. Um, so technically, the motor's best described as being three and a bit studs um, in terms of width. So it's not uh, not the best motor in terms of size. Um, you couldn't fit it, for example, between the frames. So if you're building a four wide frame, um, as you, we often do in the Le the uh, Lego train world. Uh, the power function motor you can't really fit that in unless you sacrifice either by putting some panels in or something else the circuit cubes and the cader um, don't have that problem because they are two studs wide at the base and they're two studs wide in the body for its entirety they just have a different height um, from that perspective um, in terms of power um, uh, now this may come up with some conjecture from what I've seen um, and from what I've experienced of them, and certainly from the test bench, um, the Kada uh, micro motor is m slightly more powerful than the uh, Lego Power Function Zen motor, um, and both have slight uh, have more power than the Circuit Cubes Cubic. The Cubic motor is is a good motor for its size, uh, but I don't think it's as powerful as the, as the Lego Power Function Zen or the Kada. Um, obviously, I stand to be correct on that. If somebody can prove some hard fast evidence um, but from what I felt um, from feeling the axles um, and from everything else because obviously your the best way to measure power is your stopping power um, the cubic motor is powerful enough um, I think we have previously seen videos of it of one motor powering one axle trying to pull um, I think it was two or three reefers um, previously and um, I can probably throw that uh, video in post editing um, but you know it's not as from my experience the, the circuit is cute motor is not quite as powerful as Cicada and it's not quite as powerful as the Lego power functions but it, it, it swings in roundabouts with that um, speed now speed is obviously one of those things it's very conject uh, preferential in terms of what you'd want um, and from the two I that I've had on the test bench, the power functions micro and the Kada micro, uh, power functions medium and the Kada micro, I should say. Um, the Kada is slightly less powerful than, uh, slightly less speed than the Lego power functions. The power functions does seem to be a bit smoother. Um, it seems to have a bit more speed at the top end. Um, but overall, there's not a lot between the Kada and the uh, micro and the power functions medium um, the circuit cubes is obviously the slowest out of all of them um, but it's a reasonably good uh, compromise between all three um, in terms of noise get, there's quite clearly a winner in terms of noise and that's the power functions M. it's uh, out of the three it's the quietest it's, I wouldn't say it's whisper quiet but it's the quietest um, the circuit cubes cube it is next after that, and then the Kada micro motor is last. Um, the Kada micro motor is a bit of a squeak, uh, squealer. Um, I think it's more due to the gearing than the motor. Um, and what I would say as well is that 
the Kado Micromotor I had in testing, I'd already added a little bit of lubricant um, where the axle uh, output axle housing actually comes out of the body. I'd actually put a slight bit of oil in already. Um, and then it's obviously just, it's noisy and it's a noisy motor. Um, when I was putting them in my um, uh, HH uh, 600, um, the switcher, again, they're very noisy. You can't get away from that. Um, but I would say that with noise, it's very much subjective. If you're doing it at home, you will notice the noise more than if you're doing it at a show where you've got the other noises, you've got the attendant, attendees, you've got other displays which are making noise. You might have, um, in the case of the Loke, in, in the case of the Alco HA600, you've actually got the sound system uh, from the Loke as well. So it's, it's very much a subjective thing for noise um, sometimes you may prefer having not uh, having a bit of a noisier motor so you can so you don't have to see that it's working you can hear that it's working um, and obviously the last one is connectivity more is useful um, so obviously this is a bit of a, a trade-off um, here in some respects um, so obviously and it's also again very subjective for us train builders um, so as connectivity uh, we've got the circuit cubes qubit as the winner. Um, it's not hard to see why. It's got uh, a two by four footprint, and it's also got the three Technic um, holes in the side, so you can fit the uh, stud adapter um, in. So you can actually fit uh, three of those on each side, um, and then obviously you've got the uh, top and bottom studs. Um, the Lego power functions then I've put in there as second because. It doesn't have the top studs, but it does have extra Technic studs um, facing out. Um, and generally speaking, uh, those Technic studs could be just as useful as having studs on the top. Um, now, obviously, that is a little subjective. Some would say the Kada is better because it has studs, both uh, anti studs on the underneath and studs on the top. Um, and there are. It is one of those things where second and third place would be very subjective in connectivity. Um, I'd say for train builders, it's, it, I'd probably say the CAD is probably more preference to the uh, Lego power functions um, in terms of that, but it is very subjective. Um, and I'd pro and in terms of that, I'm probably going to keep it as is. Um, it, you know, if you really want something small and compact, um, you know, the micro motor is better. Um, but then obviously the thing is the circuit keeps cubic motor the actual Bluetooth control box is a 4x4 four four, uh, footprint and it's two bricks high excluding any cable runs um, you know that again those little uh, post post notes um, so really uh, connectivity is a very direct thing I'd probably say if you're looking at pure train builds then obviously your winners are the circuit keeps cubic as the leader with the Kado second and then the Lego power functions medium right at the uh, far end there has taken up the uh, last place um, so really there's a something else uh, we need to add to this table and that is of course the overall so obviously that this is going to be a very easy one um, and I'll actually blank these out because that's not a uh, good thing so we'll blank these out so overall it's got to be um, the circuit cubes qubit. Um, and I would say that if you're doing that in terms of an overall thing, the circuit cubes qubit motor is the best out of all of them. Um, it's got, although it's a two by four footprint, um, you have uh, two by four, you have those eight anti studs, you have the eight studs, you have the technical connectivity. It is a smaller motor than the Lego power functions at medium motor but it is uh, obviously got the more connectivity it's the smaller form factor um, it is slightly noisier but with combined with the circuit cubes uh, bluetooth module which is again as i've said previously that two uh, that four by four footprint with the two bricks high um, you can get some really small builds out of that including some of like the high ab uh, crane jib runners um, with the little four wheel uh, maintenance away vehicles which have a control cab at one end um, and then the crane flatbed at the other um, you can use it to power buses uh, road vehicles um, 
road vehicles converted to uh, railway uses such as buses, um, cut inspection cars, and that sort of thing. Um, if you're doing small switches or shunters, again, that small space from the control system and the motor combined clearly puts it as a bit of a winner uh, for that sort of stuff. Um, obviously, that's going a bit beyond just the motor, but again, you have to look at the ecosystem. The circuit cubes cubic motor does not fit in with the standard Lego power functions connector. Um, so obviously you've got to counter that into the mix. Uh, second place, um, it's got to be the uh, Kada Micro here. Uh, the Kada Micro, again, um, has that similar sort of form pattern to the circuit cubes qubit. Um, and overall, if it had had the uh, Technics studs on the sides, for example, or something like that, um, it would have quite clearly been the up and away winner. Um, you've got that interaction uh, connectivity with the power, with the power function system. Um, it is a quite small form factor. Um, the price is pro is a bit more than a power function Zen motor on the second hand market. But the thing is, the Kada micro motors are brand new, so you would get that uh, manufacturer's qu uh, quality um, and in, you know assurance that you know if something goes wrong, you can go back to the store and go, well, this is you know not as functioning as expected. Um, yes, they are a noisy motor, um, but again, in a in a show environment or a display environment where they're doing something and there's other things around them, yeah, I'm not I'm not going to you know. It's quite clearly an up and away winner compared to the uh, power functions M, which takes up the mantle of being the last one in the table uh, for third place. Um, because the others, uh, it's it's pretty much a, a win based on form factor. Um, but Lego power functions um, and the Kada Micro are very similar in terms of performance. Um, the speed is very similar. The power the power is very similar. The, the micro motor's probably got more just about. Um, it's very hard to pinpoint which would have been, uh, which has more um, without some proper uh, scientific equipment. Um, but in terms of my perspective, um, the power functions and motor is clearly blown away by the uh, Kada micro motor. Um, and then obviously it falls in further behind the circuit cubes qubit because again if you're using one of these motors unless you're building something which is very confined on space um, and you'd only use the power functions components really the um, you'd really you need an aftermarket motor if you're trying to do small and powerful um, Lego just don't won't go down that route um, and to be honest with you, I have not gone down that route since the nine volt micro motor, which is the uh, which is effectively a two by two footprint with I think it's about two and a. By the time you put in all the adapters, it's probably about two two and a half bricks high. Um, I've only ever owned the one, so really it is a bit of a. It's it, and I've said it before. It's very subjective based off your function for the motor if you've got a smaller space obviously you would consider the power system in addition to the motor um, but based on motors um, you got the circuit cubes qubit the k to micro and the lego power functions m um, so that's going to be it from this video um, i've rambled on for a grand total of uh, 18 minutes in this uh, recording so uh, what combined with us for it is going to be a quite in-depth look um, so that's going to be it from me um hopefully you've enjoyed the video hopefully you've enjoyed the rambling and going through the technical aspects of it um so that's it from me and uh hopefully i'll see you in another video coming soon